हरे कृष्ण नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति विकास स्वामी नित्य नमे नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नित्य नमे नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिण जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गधाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण के वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस ब्रह्म संहिता डिस्कशन वी वर डिस्कसिंग लास्ट टू सेशंस श्लोक नंबर टू एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर वे डिस्कसिंग गोलोका गोकुल वट इज अ पोजिशन वट इज अ सिचुएशन what are the differences like that and uh, today we'll start with shloka number 3 and uh, we'll see how it goes we'll see how much we can cover so i'll be sharing screen with you of shloka okay screen share <clears throat> okay so this is shloka 3 of brahma samhita कर्णिकारम महद्यंत्रम षटकोणम वज्रकीलकम षडंग षटपदीस्थान प्रकृत्या पुरुषेन च प्रेमानंद महानंद रसेनावस्थित हि यद ज्योतिपेण मनुना काम बीजेन संगत श्लोक थ्री एंड श्लोक टू द ट्रांसेंटल लोटस इज डिस्क्राइब द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड द प्लेनेट ऑफ कृष्ण लुकिंग लाइक ए ब्यूटिफुल Lotus, Sahasra Patra Kamalam, Gokula Kiam, Mahatpadam. Now the middle of that lotus, the wall of the lotus, is described here. Okay, so we'll see the translation. <clears throat> the wall of that transcendental lotus is the realm wherein dwells Krishna. It is a hexagonal figure, the abode of the indwelling, predominated and predominating aspect of the absolute, like a diamond. the central supporting figure of self luminous krishna stands as the transcendental source of all potencies the holy name consisting of 18 transcendental letters is manifested in a hexagonal figure with six fold division so this is the shloka 3 of brahma samhita brahma now zooms in into middle of that planet of krishna in the middle of goloka and uh, he really describes what is the world what is in the middle this is the place of krishna in the center of the spiritual world is krishna that is spiritual world material world is i am in the center ishvara aham aham bhogi and uh, this is a source of all misery source of all trouble but when krishna is in the center that is the spiritual world so here the shloka 3 describes this the world the middle of it and it's described uh, as a yantra okay so we'll discuss in a minute what is all this about i'll just uh, share with you the brahma samhita translation and purport from the book this has a uh, bhakti no takur's commentaries from bengali translated into english by shila bhakti sridhar saraswati takur so we'll be reading here from the from the purport <clears throat> the transcendental pastimes of krishna are twofold you're not sharing mm -hmm. huh mm he's -hmm. not sharing okay one second how is it okay share screen is that yes okay so purport to shloka 3 the transcendental pastimes of krishna are twofold manifested and non manifested the pastimes in vrindavan visible to mortal eyes are the manifestive leela of sri krishna and that which is not so visible is non manifestive leela of krishna the non manifestive leela is always visible in goloka and the same is visible to human eyes in gokul if krishna so desires so here we are hearing this not the first time that there are two types of pastimes krishna manifests and unmanifest correct the eternal leelas of krishna are happening in goloka vrindavan in the spiritual world that is always there 
but it's not manifested to us. It's not visible to us. So they are called non-manifested ones. And here in the purport, it is said that Krishna Okay, the non-manifested lila, that lila's eternal lila in Goloka is always visible in Goloka. And the same is visible to human eyes in Gokul, if Krishna so desires. So when Krishna wants to show his pastimes within material realm, in material world, he manifests his Goloka Vrindavan there and he shows the pastimes. Okay, that's, that's up to Krishna, if Krishna so desire. In his Krishna Sandarbha, Shilaji Goswami Prabhu says, non-manifested persons are expressed in manifested Krishna Lila. And Goloka Lila is the non-manifested person of Krishna, visualized from the mundane plane. So these persons in spiritual world, which are never visible to us, actually can become visible in the Gokul by Krishna's mercy. Actually, those eternal pastas can be seen inside the Gokul, like that. This is also corroborated by Sri Rupa in his Bhagavatamrita. The progressive transcendental manifestation of Gokul is Goloka. So we remember we are discussing the differences. What is the difference between Gokul and Goloka? Actually, there's no difference. It is spiritual abode. Okay, we were discussing that one is up, one is down. There is no difference. So the progressive transcendental manifestation of Gokul is Goloka. Actually, Goloka is eternally situated in spiritual sky. These Nita Lilas are happening there eternally. So Goloka is the self-same majestic manifestation of Gokul. It's the same, but is again mentioned this majestic manifestation. Remember, we were discussing that Goloka is cannot hide its opulence. Uh, and uh, but there is no difference. It's the same, same about this manifested. The eternal persons of Krishna, although not visible in Gokul, are eternally manifested in Goloka. Okay. Goloka is the transcendental majestic manifestation of Gokul. Now, this is another sentence we were also discussing last time, that Goloka is Vaibhava Prakash of Gokul. So our Acharya explained that Gokul is even more sweeter, even more human-like, even more intimate. So in that sense, the Gokul is, Gokul is uh, the more, more sweeter in his pastimes. So what is Goloka? is transcendental majestic manifestation of Gokul. This is simply English translation of Vaibhava Prakash. That's, that's what it is. Okay. The manifestation of the non-manifested pastimes of Krishna with regard to the conditioned souls are twofold. Okay, now how these pastimes become visible to the conditioned soul? This is discussed now by Srila Bhaktisan Saraswati Thakur. First, worship, the, these pastimes can become visible. First, worship through the channel of the mantras, inaudibly recited, liberating, self dedicatory, transcendental sounds. Okay. So this is one way, through the mantras. Second one, spontaneous outflow of heart spiritual love for Krishna. This is the second one. Okay, we'll be discussing all of this. Let's, let's read through the purpose paragraph. Sri Jiva Goswami has said that worship through the mantra is possible permanently in the proper place when confined to one pastimes. This meditative meditation of Goloka is the pastime attended with the worship of Krishna to the mantra. Okay, so now what is it? I'll, I'll just share a little more of your... Okay, so here, we understand that there are two pastimes of the Lord, manifested or prakata lilas, always in Goloka spiritual realm, and unmanifested a prakata lila, in Gokul, or Vrindavan. But eternally going on, if so Krishna desire, he can display it. Okay. So Krishna's past and this material world, Prabhupada said, are called Prakata Lila because he shows Prakata Lila. Okay. Krishna shows to us, manifested. And his past and spiritual are called Aprakata Lila, unmanifested. Why? Because we cannot see them. Okay. 
By unmanifested, Prabhupada explained, we mean that they are not present before our eyes. Okay. It is not that Lord Krishna's paths are non-existent. They are going on exactly as the sun is shining perpetually. But when the sun is present before our eyes, we call it day, daytime, manifest. When it's not present, we call it night, unmanifest. Those who are above the jurisdiction of night are always in the spiritual world, where the Lord's paths are continuously manifested to them. Okay. So this is Prabhupada's quote from Madhya, Madhya Lila. Okay, now the, how to see these pastimes. This is described by, in purple by Srila Bhaktisthan Saraswati uh, Thakur, that worship through the channel of mantras. This is called mantra upasana. Okay, the mantra upasana is explained that at that stage, it, this is already in high level of, of uh, bhakti, when person is uh, actually trying to absorb himself fully, he is uh, meditating one particular mantra, one particular sequence, one particular description of Krishna and Krishna Leelas. So mantra upasana, the, this is described <clears throat> that uh, uh, one hears about Krishna's pastimes, and he focuses his mind on one particular scene, on one particular scene. He thinks of Nanda Maharaj with Krishna, or Yashoda and Krishna, like that. And uh, this is the first level that one actually practices, focusing on that mantra, chanting that mantra, visualizing it, absorbing oneself. And uh, second, mentioned here is called spontaneous outflow or heart spiritual love for Krishna. It's called Swarasiki. Swarasiki Upasana. Swarasiki Upasana is that when actually one is not anymore seeing one picture of the spiritual and focusing mind to that, but he see all flow or sequences. Actually the pastimes of Krishna become manifest to him. So this is how it is described that that uh, spontaneously by chanting Krishna's pastimes become manifested to the practitioner, to the devotee at that level. So this is this is what is described here. So um, these are the two two practices when devotee is on high level, already on bhava level, and these are devotees engaged in such a practice as they think of Krishna, they meditate on Krishna, they absorb, and then by the blessing of Guru and Krishna, these pastimes become actually manifested. So now there's not only one picture that he is focusing, meditating on, actually he can see Krishna Lila, they become manifested to the person. Okay, so this is, this is, uh, so it's not anymore one picture, there's so many happening, so many Lila, so many activities are happening here. Okay, so let's, let's read through the purport and uh, then we'll discuss. So here, this is described, the worship to the channel of mantras and spontaneous outlaws, heart, spiritual love for Krishna, Swara Sikhi Upasana. Srila Goswami has said that worship through mantra is possible permanently in the proper place when confined to one pastimes. So here the mantra Upasana is again described, focusing on one pastimes. This meditative manifestation, Goloka, is the pastime attended with the worship of Krishna through the mantra, mantra Upasana. Again, the pastimes that are performed in different planes and in different moods are autocratic in diverse way. Hence, Swarasik, spontaneous, outlaw heart, spiritual love for Krishna. So now what happened with the Swarasiki mantra upasana is that um, comes spontaneously, comes on its own. It's not that you, you now you are kind of sitting and imagining this and imagining this past and that past. It does not come from mental platform. It does not come from our imagination. It does not come by our endeavor. Autocracy means on his own. He is supreme, supremely independent. And Krishna appears, manifests his past and to whomever he wants. So that that is what is called Swarasi. Out spontaneously, completely comes that moment that Krishna's past and become visible. No? It's not that we are, you know, kind of sitting and, okay, you know, you are choosing, okay, which pastime you like and which pastime you like, then I will focus on this. Nice, we all like some 
pastimes more than others or something. We have a attraction to hear particular pastimes more than another, maybe, you know. But at this stage, uh, we just go on hearing, go on chanting, go on following sadhana, go on purifying our mind, go on focusing uh, to absorbing Krishna. But this uh, um, practice of Swarasiki Upasana is completely spontaneous. And Krishna manifest and this is actually the subject of brahma samhita this is what happened to brahma brahma was uh, you will see in few shlokas will come to that that brahma received the mantra he worshiped the krishna he did tapasya and spiritual revealed to him krishna revealed the spiritual world to brahma and brahma is describing what he is seeing this is result of his swarasiki upasan this is a result show of material display also the spiritual world to him. So then he describes Chintamani Prakara Satma Sukalpa Vriksha Lakshavri Teshu Surabhira Vipalayanta. He's looking around and he's describing what he is seeing. Past has become manifested. Huh? So this is this is what it is. So before one is a practice of focusing, absorbing, and uh, the second one is the spontaneous outflow. Okay, so it's a it's a quite straightforward explanation okay now this shloka conveys twofold meaning so this shloka refers to twofold meaning why because it describes both processes that that process of the mantra upasana and swarasik upasana one meaning is that the pastor attended with worship through the mantra consisting of 18 transcendental letters transcendental words contained in the said mantra, being differently placed, make a manifestation of only one Lila of Sri Krishna. So now the shloka, if you see, describes the wall of that transcendental lotus is the realm wherein dwells Krishna. It is a hexagonal figure. The abode of indwelling predominated, predominating aspect of the absolute should. We'll explain all of this, we are coming to that. Like diamond, the central supportive figure of self-luminous Krishna stands as the transcendental source of all potencies. The holy name, consisting of 18 transcendental letters, is manifested in hexagonal figure with sixfold divisions. So in the middle of the lotus, there is a mantra made of Krishna's name. Okay, so this shloka describes mantra upasana and swarasiki upasana. This, if you focus on this mantra, you can use it as a mantra upasana, use it means you can um, absorb yourself in focusing this. I'll just show you the picture of it so it's easy for us to see. So this is a Goloka simplified <laughs> painting of Goloka spiritual world. Are you seeing? No. no. Why Why? Why is not automatically sharing? Yeah, but we are sharing full screen so it should be automatically. Okay. So, so First, Shloka 2 describes Hatsra Patra Kamalam Gokulakya Mahatpadam. This beautiful Krishna's planet like a lotus. Okay. Now, the wall of that lotus, this is the wall. Remember how the lotus looked like? There's this yellow um, inverted um, cone. cone shape inverted. And, and uh, this is the middle of the lotus where very dwells Krishna. Now, um, we were discussing where is this mantra? Mantra goes okay. Shat konam, vajra kilakam, shat konam, shat anga, shat padistanam. There are two triangles inverted to each other. Okay, shat konam, so you get the shat kona star. You know, in the West, this is known as David star, but actually, this is used in Vedas thousands of years ago. You know, Mr. David could be sued for the copyrights <laughs> okay so what is it shat konam vajakila shadanga shat padristanam prakritya purushenacha okay just a second mm -hmm. so the wall of the transcendental lotus realm the holy name consists of 18 transcendental letters now this the mantra is displayed within these six divisions okay so in the middle is the kama bijana which is called clean and here is the mantra uh, given in the purport in the purport shilabhaksinata saraswati takumani so on the six sides it's a hexagonal abode 
mantra is is uh, written. So what is it? Actually, this is the description of the yantra. Yantra is a diagram that embodies the mantra for the sake of worship. Mantra could be worshipped. And mantra is drawn in the diagram of a yantra and is placed on the altar. You can worship, you can meditate upon. It's like a, like a you may say, two-dimensional deity. You know, before, behind every mantra, there is personality of the mantra. So here, this is called Gopala Mantra. This mantra, while worship, reveals, Krishna reveals himself. Okay. So here, these uh, six syllables, six names, are displayed like this, in this hexagonal arrangement. And in the middle, this is the sky. The holy name, consisting of 18 transcendental letters, is manifesting hexagonal figure with six-fold division. So here, this is hexagonal figure, and there are these six-fold divisions are there. Okay, so let's see the purport. You'll see that. Are you getting the purport? Yes. Yes? Hmm? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here. This shloka conveyed twofold meanings. One meaning is that in the past time attended worship through the mantra consists of 18 transcendental letters. Transcendental words contained in the said mantra being differently placed make a manifestation only one lila of Krishna. Okay. As for example, Krim, Krishna, Govinda, Gopijana, Vallabhaya, Swaha. This is a hexagonal mantra consists of six transcendental words. Krishnaya, Govindaya, Gopijana, Vallabhaya, Swaha. These six transcendental words, when placed juxtra positionally, indicate the mantra. So juxtra positionally, this is what it means. It means exactly this. Can you see? It doesn't go automatically. Every time you have to stop sharing. It's not coming to the screen again. You got it? Okay. Can you see? They cannot see. But it's coming. Okay, you are not getting it here. Why is it like that? Now we got it. Now you got it. Oh, it takes a little time, is it? Okay, so juxtra positionally. You see this? It goes around. Now it's some disconnection. Okay. All right. So this is how it looks like. Okay, this is what it is. Then you may say, oh, this is too much now. What is this he's talking about, you know, and uh, where is Prabhupada say anything like that? We never heard this, and correct? Some, sometimes we are a little bit um, bewildered when we hear some new things. But we are studying Brahma Samhita, we are going through the purpose, we are trying to understand what is Mantra Upasana, what is Swarasik Upasana, what is all of this. Okay, here, there is Srila Prabhupada's quote. You get it? So you have to do manually every time, basically. Okay. One should execute his spiritual activities. This is Prabhupada's quotes from Madhya Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay. One should execute his spiritual activities in the Swarupagata state of consciousness. Okay, this we were discussing last time. He should also chant such spiritual mantras as Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And the Chin Mai Gayatri, Klim Krishna, Govinda, Gopijana, Vallabha, Swaha, and Klim Kama Deva, Vidmahe Pushpa Bhanaya, Dhimahe Tanno Nangaf Prachodayar. These are the Kama Gayatri or Kama Bija mantras. One should be initiated by bona fide spiritual master and worship Krishna with these transcendental mantras. Okay, so it's not that Prabhupada never told us about that. Prabhupada knew all the philosophy and he spoke all of this. And uh, when we study a little bit, you know, we try to understand what is this all about, what, what Prabhupada is talking about, what Bhakti Sansar is, is talking about. Okay, this is on the level of Bhava and Prem, but theoretically, philosophically, we should understand what are the stages, what are the steps, and then we'll understand, you know, what is the goal, where we are going, and uh, we can understand, we can, you know, fully absorb ourselves in studying all these purpose. Prabhupada told so many things that we are kind of not going into details, he mentioned so many aspects of our Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy that we should be curious, what is this all about? Okay, of course, this is discussion of Gayatri. 
mantras. And that this discussion basically should be, um, explanation should be given by a guru. Mantras, these mantras are given for second initiated devotees. And the uh, guru will explain what is the meaning and tell how to chant and when to chant and everything like that. And the uh, same thing, this uh, point of mantra upasana or swarasiki upasana, that also. Guru will reveal the moment, he will give guidance when to do that and how to do that and all these things. We don't have to worry now. Okay, what do I do now? Now I have to take second initiation. Yes, not second, third also. Take sannyas, surrender to Krishna. That's what we have to do. And Guru is there to guide us step by step in every aspect because he is linked to Krishna. That is the definition of Guru. One who is linked to Krishna, to Guru Parampara, he is surrendered to his Guru and his Guru and his Guru. This is how there is a link to Krishna. So this is what Srila Prabhupada said in that purport. I'll share a little more. The... As explained by Krishna Kaurya Goswami in the previous verse, and the current verse, Prabhupada is quoting, Vrindavane aprakrita naivina madan kama gayatri kama bije yandra upasan purusha yoshit kibas thavara jangam sarva chitakarshka sakshat manmata madan Okay, so this is Prabhupada quotes. A person who is properly purified and initiated by the spiritual master worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, by chanting this mantra, the Kama Gayatri with Kama Bija. As Bhagavad Gita, 1865, confirms, one should engage in transcendental worship in order to be fit for being attracted by Krishna, the all-attractive. Okay, so this is the Prabhupada's quote here. So, now, Shridhar Goswami comments here and explains that Srimad Bhagavatam, the which is presented uh, to us by Srila Vyasadev as a final book, as a last book, even after writing Vedanta Sutra, the last book he wrote is Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Goswami said that particularly Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommended that Srimad Bhagavatam, Malam Puranam, that is the best book, the spotless book about knowledge of God, Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? Uh, because it actually reveals Krishna fully. The, he helps us to develop love for Krishna, helps us to, to fully reawaken our love for Krishna, and gives example of many devotees, gives us a sambandha, knowledge of Krishna and Jiva's relation and their nature, and also gives the knowledge of the Abhideya, the process of surrender, and Prayojana, what is the goal? So Srila Jiva Goswami says that in Bhagavatam and other scriptures, there are many, many mantras there, given for practitioners, for those who are um, advanced in their bhakti, to practice mantra upasana. So he gives an example of uh, mantra upasana, okay? He says, uh, Srila Jaya Goswami says, mantra upasana, first mantra is, one of the mantras, for example, from Brahma Samhita that we chant every day unknowingly that this is mantra upasana or something at our level doesn't even matter. Venum kvanantam aravinda dalayataksham barhavatam sam asitam buddhasundarangam kandharpa kotika maniya vishesha shogam govindam adipurusham tamaham bhajam. So this is the mantra. Look at the description. Now, those who are advanced on the Bhava level, they, they chant this mantra, they meditate on mantra. Okay. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is adept at playing on his flute with blooming eyes like lotus petals, with head decked with peacock feather, with the figure of beauty tinged with the hue of blue clouds, and his unique loveliness, charming millions of cupids. So this is full absorption in form of Krishna, with beautiful eyes, with playing his flute, and uh, dark complexion like a blue cow, blue cloud and peacock feather and beautifully looking like a charming millions of cupids. So this is an example of mantra upasana, for example. Okay. Now, Prabhupada also gave in 10th Kento the shloka just at the beginning of the Damodar Lila when the mother Yashoda started churning the yogurt for, to make butter for Krishna, there is a shloka in 10 Kento. 
Here is the translation of the shloka. <laughs> Dressed in a soft round yellow sari, with a belt tied about her full hips, Mother Yashoda pulled on the churning rope, pulled on the churning rope, laboring considerably, her bangles and earrings moving and vibrating, and her whole body shaking. Because of her intense love for her child, her breasts were wet with milk. Her face, with its very beautiful eyebrows, was wet with perspiration, and malati flowers were falling from her hair. Now look at the purport of Prabhupada. This is a 10 Kento chapter 9, Shloka 3. Prabhupada writes in purport. Anyone who desires to be Krishna conscious in motherly affection or parental affection should contemplate the bodily features of Mother Yashoda. Now, here Prabhupada explains that those devotees who aspire Vatsalya Rasa, Krishna conscious in motherly affection or parental affection, should contemplate the bodily features of Mother Yashoda, should practice mantra upasana on this shloka. It's not that one should desire to become like Yashoda, for this is Mayavad, not that I'll become Yashoda. No, but they meditate on the person who is actually serving Krishna in Vatsalya Rasa, who is the, having these qualities, that type of love, Vatsalya Rasa, which one aspires for. Okay. So, either in parental affection or conjugal love, friendship or servitorship, in any way, we must follow in the footsteps of the inhabitants of Vrindavan, not try to become like them. Therefore, this description is provided here. Okay, so here Prabhupada also confirms what Srila Jiva Goswami said. Prabhupada confirms that uh, the Bhagavatam is full of these shlokas, which are actually used for the advanced devoted to meditate, to absorb. And Prabhupada explained this. In Nectar of Devotion, we heard that they are Raga Atmika Bhaktas. Raga Atmika Bhaktas are those advanced self-realized soul who already developed their love for Krishna. And these are spontaneously loving Krishna, like gopis, gopas, residents of Vrindavan. So now to develop that type of love, one should follow them, follow their example, follow their vow, follow their emotions. And this is called Raga Nuga, Raga Nuga. Raga Nuga means following the Raga of those advanced devotees. So here Srila Prabhupada explained, those who want Vatsala Rasa, they should meditate on the form of Mother Yashoda. They should be absorbed. What is their mood? What is their attitude? How she wants to serve Krishna? All, all full absorption like this. So you see, Srila Prabhupada was, was uh, speaking about that. This is right, ten canto. Here, shared screen, you have? Advanced devotees must cherish this description. Always think your Mother Yashoda's features, how she was dressed, how she was walking and perspiring how beautifully the flowers were arranging her hair, and so on. One should take advantage of the full description provided here by thinking of Mother Yashoda in maternal affection for Krishna. So you see, Prabhupada gives this example of mantra upasana or for advanced devotees, okay? This is for in, in that advanced level. Okay, let me see. Now, Srila Jiva Goswami gives another example of Swarasiki Upasana, again from Brahma Samhita. Chintamani prakara sadma sukalpa vriksha lakshavrite shusurabhir abhipalayantam lakshmi sahasra shatasam brahma sevyamanam govindam adipurusham tamaham bhajami. Now see the translation. I worship Govinda, the primeval lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows, yielding all desire in a boat built with spiritual gems surrounded by millions of purpose trees, always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds of thousands of Lakshmis or Gopis. So now this is the example of Swarajiki Upasana. That means that Lord Brahma, when he actually saw, had the vision of spiritual world by Krishna's mercy, that he could see all these pastimes. He could see the Leelas flowing in front. Now he's not focusing on one mantra. He's not thinking and focusing just spontaneously, just which was revealed to him. And he could see, oh, the Chintamani and Surabi cows are roaming around, and Krishna is uh, tending the cows, and here there are gopis serving. So he could see multiple activities, leelas, 
spontaneously manifested in front of him. So this is this is the this is the example, for example, one one of that. So here the the spiritual sound of mantras, hearing from bona fide devotees chanting the Maha Mantra, those sounds and sound vibration reveals Krishna's form. Krishna is seen by hearing, not by material eyes. That's that's uh, what Srila Prabhupada teaches. That you see these mantras, they have potency to reveal Krishna. So we are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So holy name has potency to reveal Krishna's form, Krishna's qualities, Krishna's past and Krishna's abode. This is this is how it goes. It's not in vain. It, it, the result will come, but we have to we have to apply ourselves. We have to apply ourselves. So Srila Prabhupada quotes here. He quotes from the third canto. He says like this. Uh, oh my Lord, your devotees can see you through the ears by the process of bona fide hearing, and thus their hearts become cleansed, and you take your seat there. You are so merciful to your devotees that you manifest yourself in the particular eternal form of transcendence in which they always think of you. So you see, what is the process? The process is of bona fide hearing from the bona fide guru, authorized acharyas, and the Lord. The heart becomes cleansed, and then the Lord takes his seat there. This is what the shloka directly says. No? And Lord manifests in particular form how devotees desire to see him, according to one's affection, according to one's bow, according to one's feelings at, uh, to, to Krishna, express desires how to, in which way to serve Krishna. Krishna reciprocates. No? So, Hearing is essential for us. Hearing is a, a process is chanting the holy name. Nama Sankirtan is a process. But to chant properly, to get full benefit of chanting, the Shavanam is essential. The Shavanam is heart of Kirtana. The proper hearing is there, proper understanding is there. Then actually the, the full benefit will get full benefit. If we know the importance of holy name, if we know where we are going, if we know what is the priority, what is the goal of all of this, then we'll be enthused, we'll be inspired, we'll be dedicated, we'll we'll be doing nice chanting and serving and trying to control mind and senses and trying to serve Guru and Krishna and expecting their mercy and blessings. So that that was the example in Srila Prabhupada's own life when uh, he went when as a grihasta he went to see his Guru Maharaj. The time Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur was camping in Vrindavan, they, they had all Godia Vaishnavas from uh, Calcutta and Mayapur, Bengal. They came to Vrindavan to do Parikrama with Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And uh, they were in Koshi. In Koshi, they were, uh, there's a small place in Raja Mandala Parikrama. And uh, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur was lecturing. And uh, there was a time that uh, announcement was made by devotees that, okay, we are going to see, what was that um, Shesha Shai temple? Shesha Shai temple, yeah? That we are going to see Shesha Shai temple, whoever wants to have darshan, please come, you know? Otherwise, uh, there is Bhaktisan Saraswati Thakur class, evening or whatever time, you know? You can stay on class, otherwise you can come for darshan. So many, many devotees went for darshan whatever reasons they're thinking okay we were all the way from bengal we went we want to see temples around this and that the shri Prabhupada said but i was thinking uh, that better i stay in here and he said that pakistan saraswati thakur noticed oh he's a new man but he stayed and participated in the class he came to hear he's serious about hearing he got the blessing of guru for that and of course we you know shri Prabhupada's transcendental position but point is here that Prabhupada is saying that this is proper. Sri Prabhupada said, um, so although I was new, I did not want to see the Shesha Shai temple. I decided to hear instead. So this is the message. And also there is a story when, like that class was given by Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when he said, it's, the devotees went for this darshan, he said, where, where they are they going? So somebody said, Maharaj, they are going to see the Shesha Shai temple. What they will see, but their mundane eyes 
Lord is seen by hearing. So this is the way how to sit on. So this is so powerful message to us. We should be patient. We should we should be nishayat, utsaha nishayat dharyat. We should have this um, attitude in devotion service, you know. Yes, we are chanting many years. Oh, I'm not seeing Krishna, you know. Okay, it will come whenever Krishna wants to reveal himself. And if he doesn't reveal himself, anyway, he is Supreme Lord, you know. It's, you know, it's, it's like there's no condition. We are not expecting, you know. We are not uh, artificially trying to push ourselves at that level. Okay, so this is, this is what Srila Prabhupada uh, given us this important instruction. It is by hearing, the Lord will be revealed. And you can see these mantras. We are hearing, we are chanting, we are studying shastras. All these things helps us purify and bring us to that level when Lord is pleased, he may reveal himself. Okay, so it's not that, you know, this is kind of no desperate, oh, this is so high level, it will never happen, you know. Okay, look at this quote. Srila Prabhupada always encourages us uh, simple, simple people, or simple devotees. Uh -huh. So Prabhupada said, so you have to see Krishna in this way, as Krishna advises. Then very soon you will see Krishna. There is no question of not seeing him. You will see him every moment. Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilo Chanena Santas Sadaiva, 24 hours. Sadaiva means always. Those who are actually Krishna devotees, they are seeing Krishna. They are not seeing nothing. They are seeing nothing but, but Krishna. There is no question of not seeing him. But you have to adopt the method how to see him. And that is given here. You adopt it. And you will see Krishna. Where is the difficulty? Prabhupada's famous. Where is the difficulty? No? So he is assuring us. He is assuring us that no, you stick to the to the process. You stick to the hearing, chanting, sadhana. Serve, absorb mind, endeavor, and then then we follow. All the processes of bhakti, Upadhyaya Shamrita is there describing, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is there describing, Guru is there guiding us. So, so result will be there. No question of not seeing. Krishna will reveal himself. Because he, is, he will be pleased with his devotees. So now there is some little discussion I'd like to draw your attention. Because now as the moment is expanding, we are, we are having many devotees and many people are chanting and wearing tilak and, uh, you know, participating in our programs. But really, we have to uh, study Srila Prabhupada's books. We have to understand the, how to apply ourselves fully in Krishna consciousness, how to absorb ourselves. Because uh, things should not be taken lightly. There is some um, idea that uh, Guru is merciful, Krishna is merciful, now we are chanting Hare Krishna, surely we are going home back to Godhead. Fine, that's there, that's for sure. But the, here you can see that, that uh, one actually has to seriously apply himself in the process. It's not just automatic, just mechanically like that. Just uh, without thinking, you know. Uh, the progress in bhakti will be seen. Vairagya Vidya, Nija Bhakti Yoga. Knowledge must be there, we must know. What is the process? What is the goal? How it goes? And also, the, the renunciation must come also. These attachments to matter, they, they also must cease. It must be reduced. It cannot be like, you know, um, you know having a fancy gadgets, having a fancy car, expensive house, living in posh city, and uh, I'm chanting Hare Krishna and going home back to Godhead. You know, there is a little bit illusion to think like that. You know, that I will run spiritual life successfully and material life successfully also. Okay, it's possible, but how much I'm attached? Am I attached to those material aspects or not? That is the question. That's really something that is taken just for granted. So I'm chanting Hare Krishna, I go home back to Godhead. So this is kind of oversimplifying the process. Prabhupada said, chant Hare Krishna and you'll go home back to Gautam. True, but he also said there are four regulatory principles. He also said there are 10 offenses. He also said to study his books. 
he also said that once you develop love for God, then you go home back to God. <laughs> so ultimately, do we have love for God? Or we see our heart, how much attachments we have, how much ego we have. Now, it's nice devotee, nice devotee. As soon as you mention money, he changes his way. Oh, why, oh, why they ask? I should not. And I scratch his car, little scratching car, like I scratch his own body, something, you know, oh, such a reaction. No? So we can see ourselves, we can see ourselves in daily dealings that when this moment of um, spontaneous temptation comes, <laughs> <laughs> then we see how much actually we are Krishna conscious. Yeah? So, so this is reality. Kind of we are oversimplify. Everything is taken for granted. Guru is merciful. Krishna is merciful. Guru is merciful. Krishna is merciful. But Krishna is not cheap. Who say Krishna is not merciful? He said just by chanting, simple process. You don't have to do yoga. We don't have to go to Himalayas. We don't have to do heavy tapasya. We don't have to study Sanskrit. I mean, how more simple you want to be? Just chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We chant and then we absorb ourselves with this process. And we know the process, we know the stages. Arav Shada, Tadat Sat Sangha, Tad Bhajana Kriya, Tad Anartha Nevritisya, Tad Anishta Ruchita, Tad Asakti, Bhav and Prem. So we know, we know the stages. We should see where we are, what I am, where I'm situated, how do I, am I, am I advancing or not? Krishna is merciful. He given so easy process, but it's not cheap. It's not cheap that you, you can not apply yourself and then you think, oh yeah, I'm going home back to work. That's all. My guru very much. Oh. We met person in the train and we were chanting. And he also started pulling some locket with photo of some so-called spiritual guru. And he said, I'm also into spiritual things. I said, nice. So the, he asked, what are you chanting? So we said, we are chanting Hare Krishna. Oh, you have a guru? Yes, I have a guru. I also have a guru, he said. <laughs> so he said, good. So what do you follow? What are the you know, practices? What is your sadhana? What are the rules you follow? Oh, my guru Maharaj, very merciful. There's no rules to follow. <laughs> <laughs> so you and your guru will stay in material world. It's not like that. It, this is what is, you know, Something we are a little bit, now we expanded so much, so many devotees are there. But you can see, you know, it's, uh, we have to probably say, boil the milk now. We have to boil the milk. We have to study more. We have to read more. We have to absorb ourselves more. We cannot uh, just go on maintaining our material desires and thinking just for granted. I take a diksha bus and go home back to work. No? There is a, something must be done. So Srila Prabhupada say, we, should, we shall mold our life so that 24 hours a day we can remember Krishna. This is, this is what, what hmm. so this is some little warning, okay. Srila Prabhupada give us clear warning that one must actually purify one's heart and actually, you know, before able to see Krishna and Vrindavan. Okay, I'll just read one more quote from Srila Prabhupada, not to here, Prabhupada said, can you see? When one understands the truth about this life, but is not completely cleansed of material contamination, he is not factually situated in transcendental abode, Vrindavan, although he may understand spiritual life. So this is very serious. Okay, one is very serious. He understands the truth about this life, but is not completely cleansed of material contamination. Is not factually situated in transcendental about Vrindavan. You see this, Vrindavan won't be manifested to him. Although he may understand spiritual life, he understands, okay, I have to do something, but still there is attachment. Okay, in this stage, he can utter the Kama Gayatri with the Kama Bija. When, however, he becomes free from all bodily sex urges, he can actually attend the supreme abode of Vrindavan. So clear, correct? No? Last time we get uh, many questions, which uh, unfortunately there was no time to answer all of them. But somebody says, okay, so we want to die in Vrindavan, job done, we go home back to Godhead, no? There were all these discussions. But you see, it's not, it's not so easy. It's not so easy. 
uh, of course, we know that not to divert now too much, but but nothing take for cheap. There is no shortcut. There is surrender that has to be done. You know, the devotees in Vrindavan told me that that somebody shifted to Vrindavan. We desire to live, but in Vrindavan, which is nice. But in time of that the heart attack, they took him in ambulance and took him to Delhi. <laughs> what a misfortune! Of course, anybody who lives bad in Vrindavan goes home back to Godhead. But there was a warning by Prabhupada: if they do, if they commit offenses, people have to take birth as an animals. So somebody asked, what happened if the non-devotee lives bad? If non-devotee means he did some offenses, correct? Prabhupada said, if devotee lives but in Vrindavan, goes home back to Godhead. If devotees commit Vaishnava Parada, he takes also birth as an animal. One more life has to suffer in animal body and then goes home back to Godhead. But nothing is just, just black and white. And of course, these people born in Vrindavan, it's not a coincidence that they're born in Vrindavan. They must be, they have practiced Bhakti in previous life. Otherwise, how you take birth in Vrindavan? Not by coincidence also, no? So we always have respect for Rajavasis. We always have respect for everyone there. But we know real Rajavasis are Guru Parampara. These are devotees who dedicate their life. These are, these are pure devotees whom we follow. These are the Rajavasis we follow. You know? And they, wherever they go, they make Vrindavan. So you know, many things are there that is not just black and white. Not, not so, so don't take things for granted. We have to really endeavor. We have to apply ourselves. So this, uh, okay, let's discuss a little more. We have some more time. Let's, let's see a little more. Here, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur describes the same thing. The same thing means he explains how this progress comes when devotee is already an advanced level. Worship consists in meditation Maha Mantra. In the beginning, one worships the holy name by meditating of Maha Mantra. Then, as one meditates in this way, on the holy name, one happily sees in his meditation Lord Krishna, accompanied by his gopas and gopis, under Kalpa Vriksha tree in spiritual world. Then all ecstatic symptoms Sadri Kabha becomes manifest in his body. Filled with the bliss of worshipping Lord, the devotee finds that the hairs of his body stand erect. The flower of the holy name gradually blossoms and becomes very fragrant. You see how he describes. The flower of the holy name gradually blossoms and becomes very fragrant. Then Lord Krishna's pastime in eight periods of day become visible. And then he describes Swarasigya Upasana and Bhakti Yuntaku. Then one attains the stage of Swarasigya Upasana, the nectar stage of worship. Then one sees Lord Krishna enjoying specific pastime in his spiritual world. By spiritual master's mercy, one gradually attains his original spiritual form, enters the Lord's pastimes, and attains the association of the Sakis, gopis. Following example of Srimati Radharani and so on and so on, you know, one once actually absorbs in the service. So this is in Harinama Chintamani described. Okay, so you can see Bhakti Thakur speaking the same, Srila Prabhupada talks the same, and these are the stages. You may say, okay, this is not for us, but this is where we are all going. This is what the process is described. So I'll go back to the purport. Can you see the purport? Okay, here. Now, so the mantra was given and the description is here. So the mantra, this mantra mentioned here, it reveals both, you can be practiced as a mantra upasana or swarasigi upasana. Actually, it is explained by different uh, commentators that each name, reveals one particular uh, lila of the Lord in Mantra Upasana. Or when somebody comes to level Swarasik Upasana, Mantra reveals actually Krishna's pastimes fully manifested. So both two meanings. So this is this was mentioned. This shloka conveys a twofold meaning. One is that Mantra could be used for Mantra Upasana and Swarasik Upasana. Okay, here, let's go through the purpose. The hexagonal great transcendental machinery is in this wise. The principal seed, Klim, is situated in the instrument as the central pivot. Klim is the central mantra. Remember, in the center is a Klim. Okay. Now, 
will see the purpose. Anybody with an impression of such an instrument in his mind and concentrating his thoughts on such spiritual activities can attain, like Chandrabhaja, to the knowledge of the cognitive principles. So by meditating on this mantra, the example is given here, the Chandradvaja. Chandradvaja, uh, some commentators say that it's an example of a king who meditated on this uh, mantra and he could realize the self, he could realize the soul and Lord revealed himself. But Chandradvaja, most of the commentators they say it's the Lord Shiva. Shiva wears the Chandra in his method hair. So Chandradvaja is Shiva's name. So Lord Shiva would actually have the action of Lord Krishna. Krishna will reveal himself by using this mantra, by meditating. Okay. The word swa indicates kshetragya, one who is conversant with one's inner self. And the word ha indicates the transcendental nature. So finally, when you meditate on this mantra, chanting the mantra and meditating, worshipping the mantra in the diagram as a yantra also, it reveals the knowledge of the self. It reveals one swarupa. That's what it said here. This meaning of the mantra has also been corroborated by Sri Hari Bhakti Vilas. The general meaning is this, that one who is desirous, desirous of entering into esoteric patterns of Krishna will have to practice his transcendental service along with the culture of devotional knowledge relative to him. Okay, so here, look at this. This is for devotees who are ready to enter into Krishna's esoteric pastimes. This is, we are talking about bow level, which is just a bud, the sun ray of love of God, just beginning of love of God. So they, they meditate on this mantra, they use this mantra. And, and, and what is it? It said that this general meaning is that, okay, we'll have to practice transcendental service alone with the culture of devotional knowledge. So the knowledge, there is a pre-requirement of knowledge to enter into Krishna Leelas. What is this knowledge? This mantra, Krim Krishna, Govinda, Gopi, Jana, Valabhaswa, each word reveals particular knowledge to the practitioner. So here, the first one reveals Krishna Swarupa. This is required the proper self of Krishna, to understand actually the true transcendental nature of Krishna, proper Swarupa of Krishna. Second one, Krishna is Chin Maya Vraja Lila Vilas Swarupa. Krishna, Govinda, the true nature of Krishna's transcendental pastimes in Raja, that should be understood, should not be considered mundane, should not be, they, they should understand that these are transcendental eternal personalities, Nitya Siddhas, these are eternal potencies of the Lord. This is all spiritual. That, not that these are some immoral, mundane pastimes. That, that knowledge should be clear. And this is revealed by worshiping the, the true nature and much more than what I said. Then, Krishna Govinda Gopijana. Tat Parikara Gopijana Swarupa. The true nature of his spiritual sources in Raja. The spiritual milkmen and the milkmaids, gopis and gopas. The true nature of their position as a devotee is, is revealed. Tat Vallabha. The true nature of self surrendered to Krishna in the footsteps of spiritual milkmaids of Raja. Again, that, that our position as an eternal servant of God, following in the footsteps of, of the advanced devotees, selfless or And Shuddha Jiva Sya Chit Jnana Sarupa, the true nature of spiritual knowledge of the unalloyed individual soul. Chit Prakriti Arthad Krishna Seva Svabhava, the true nature of transcendental service to Krishna is this that the esoteric relation is established on the awakening of one's pure cognition. So this is that when actually one, one uh, the, his own Swarupa is revealed, spiritual nature, in particular bow, in particular rasa with Krishna. And this is, this is, uh, this is when one can actually see Krishna Leelas and actually enter into the transcendental pastimes. Okay. The meaning is that rasa is only the transcendental service of the central refuge Sri Krishna as predominating aspect of the absolute by one's ego as the spiritual maid or the predominating moiety of the absolute integer, attended with pure devotion in the shape of one's entire self-surrender. So here, the, we are all prakriti. We are all uh, servants of God. Lord is Purusha, Govinda Mahadi Purusha. 
and uh, the everyone and everything all his energy all the jewels everybody is engaging his service this is eternal constitutional position so here we can see this uh, okay let me see this diagram here the this mantra represents radha and krishna and here the triangle predominated and predominating aspect represents the the actually relation of the supreme lord and the servant you know so this is all depicted depicted in the yantra in that way so okay we'll go back to purport the pastimes in goloka or in gokul during the stage of devotion progress is the meditative worship to the mantra and during the stage of perfection, the past manifests themselves as the unrestrained transcendental jubilation. So here again, it is repeated that the past in Goloka in, or in Gokul, during the stage of devotion progress, is meditative worship through mantra. So mantra upasana, and next level, mantra upasana will lead us to Swarasiki upasana. Um, during the stage of perfection, the past manifests themselves as unrestrained transcendental jubilation. So this is, uh, again, Srila Jiva Goswami in his Krishna Sandarbha explains this, that mantra passing just like a one picture, one frame, like a one pond uh, of, of the water on the bank near the, near the Ganga, near the river. But the river is full stream of water flowing. So one, one mantra is like a one that pond of water. But when this past is revealed, it just continuously, continuously, incessantly they flow, manifested in front of devotees' eyes. Actually, actually, you can see by spiritual eyes. So mantra upasana leads to this swarasiki upasana. Like that like mantra is one picture, and here you have full movie going on, something like that. I mean, I'm trying to simplify, you know. Okay, this is all above our head, but this is the purpose. What do we do? At least we understand what we are reading. At least we go to the purpose. Few more. Uh, yeah, we are extending a little bit just for a minute, and uh, we, we can we can go through this purport. This is the real aspect of Goloka or Gokul, which will be made more explicit in due course. So, Srila Bhagavan Saraswati Thakur explains here that by this mantra upasana, swarasik upasana, Brahma actually saw the spiritual world. This is the real aspect of Goloka, which will be made more explicit, which will be more described in next shlokas in Brahma Samhita. We'll come to that. The meaning of the words Jyoti, Rupena, Manuna, is that the transcendental meaning is expressed in mantra by means of which, on transcendental desires of love for Krishna and the service of Krishna being added, one is established in eternal love of Krishna. Such eternal passes are eternally manifested in Goloka. Jyoti, Rupena, Manuna means really it is self-manifested. Jyoti Rupena Manuna means actually it reveals himself. It, it is self manifested, you know. Okay, so this was the purpose of this shloka. And Srila Jiva Goswami explains the, the all this third shloka explains this as a yantra. And actually, we could draw that diagram because of that. And the other shastras also describe even more details of this yantra mm -hmm. so let me see just a few more quotes are there okay we have a one more quote from gopal tapani upanishad just to conclude just to conclude here Gopal Tapani Upanishad is quoted. You're getting? No? Okay. By worshipping, by worship, using the mantra, Chandra became free of illusion and realized Atma. Chanting the mantra, enclosed in Om with concentration, he saw the Lord. So this is an example that Chandra we were discussing confirmed with Shastra, and here is explanation is given that who chant this mantra, one who utters this mantra, mantra, 
Klim Krishna Govinda Gopijana Vallabha Swaha will quickly attain Krishna. He will not attain any other goal. No? So this is again confirming Shasta that this mantra reveals the Supreme Lord. And uh, the here the Prabhupada's point is here, Prabhupada's warning. All mantras should be received through the authorized guru, and disciples must satisfy the guru in all respects after surrendering at his lotus feet. Okay. In the Padma Purana, it also said, Sampradaya vihinaye mantraste nishphala mataha. There are four sampradayas or the simplest succession, namely the Brahma Sampradaya, Rudra Sampradaya, Sri Sampradaya, Kumara Sampradaya. If one wants to advance in spiritual power, one must receive his mantras from one of these bona fide sampradayas. Otherwise, he will never successfully advance in spiritual life. So what is the point? The point is that that uh, basically it's not enough just that now we heard the mantra, now we read the Brahma Samhita purport, now I know the mantra, Krishna will be revealed. It doesn't work like that. Mantra has to be received by the Guru, from the Guru, by the disciple, from the Guru. And just like Acharya has explained that girl may hear about pregnancy, may read about pregnancy, but unless she gets married, she's not going to become pregnant. It doesn't work. No. So the idea is that Guru has to reveal this mantra, give you instruction to practice mantra, empower you. And when comes in Guru Parampara and proper, then only mantra works. Not that you know you go to get the book and now I'll do the shortcut and it doesn't work like that. These mantras were usually not given in the public, but Srila Bhaktisan Saraswataku printed it in the book. But anyway, the, the idea is explanation is there for devotees who practice. And those who do not practice, they know they have to go through the guru also. So this is all explained. So there is no harm. Sometimes, you know, we were discussing in the morning with Guru Maharaj, who's calling us Bhakti Vikash Maharaj. So I asked him that you're not supposed to tell this mantra, but it's printed right there in the purport. And we are all reading and we are trying to understand what is the meaning, what is this all about? Is it difficult? The purports are difficult. We have to, you know, a little bit read again and again and uh, see what Prabhupada says, see what Acharya says, you know, discuss with Guru how to understand everything. But we want to understand, we want to understand what is our process, what is our goal, how do we go about, and also we won't be bewildered and cheated by some um, unusual people who sometimes, you know, uh, try to impress devotees that they will give you mantra, they will give you Swarupa and this and that, you know, the, 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 your spiritual life gone. Our spiritual life will be disaster by all this, um, by not knowing what actually is supposed to be, what actually is there, you know. So, so this is the this is the warning given by Prabhupada, and full guidance is given to us. We don't have to worry. We chant Hare Krishna, and Guru will reveal to us. Somebody asked, but oh, but my Guru Maharaj already left for spiritual world. Who will guide me now? Who will tell me the mantra? But Guru is eternal. He has spiritual body. He has no problem communicating to you. It's okay. <laughs> it will come. You don't have to worry. There is no material barrier, you know, that, oh, my Guru is not there. Shall I go find another Guru? Why? You follow what Guru said. You are already linked to the spiritual. We are spiritually connected. It's not that, you know. So I, I got a question even before the lecture, I was talking to one devotee, so he had this question, so I'm answering for that. And um, only one more thing we didn't touch, just one, one, I know a little bit prolonging, but I think you will forgive me this time, I hope so. Here, mm -hmm. there is one more point. Okay. <clears throat> I want to show you, yes. Okay, here. The second part of shloka says, Premananda, Mahananda, Rasainava Sitam Hyat, Jyoti Rupena Manuna, Kama Bijana Sangatam. That, that um, this yantra, in this yantra, or with this abode which will be revealed by the yantra, there is a bliss from Prema. This is called Premananda. So by worshiping this yantra, by meditating on the Lord, this is called Gopala Mantra. By meditating on this mantra, by chanting, one will achieve Premananda. 
the pleasure of prema of exchange. Why? Because one Swarupa will be revealed, one will enter into Krishna's pastimes. Then Mahananda, no? Mahananda, which becomes a variety of mature rasa filled with even greater bliss. Now the prema is general definition, but they, again there are stages of condensed, more condensed, and more condensed, and more condensed prema displayed in Vrindavan. So this, this uh, shloka is uh, interesting. Shila Jiva Goswami in commentary explained this. After explaining all the yantra, explaining the mantra and how to worship mantra upasana, swarasiki upasana, and giving all the quotes, then he explained. The result is premananda, mahananda, rasena vasitam hiyatma. The, this assume another form a self revealing or spiritual jyoti rupena becomes swear revealing mantra uh, through by using this kama bijana sangatam though kama bija is part of mantra is mentioned separately also as a mantra because sometimes it is used independently but anyway we will discuss more about the gayatri mantra we'll discuss more what brahma chants when it comes to that shloka so okay Hare krishna so thank you very much for hearing. I apologize for prolonging a little bit, but we just wanted to accomplish these notes for this particular shloka. And uh, yeah, for devotees, uh, for those who have questions, please kindly, the, if you can focus on the topic, that would be very nice that we can uh, discuss first the questions related to the class, which is difficult one today. <laughs> And uh, of course, we are absolutely unqualified to talk about this or discuss, but with Guru's permission, we, we did discuss the purpose just to generally understand what is going on. So, and then after that, we can see questions related, because from last class, it seems like there are a few questions pending or something devotees were interested to hear. So, uh, let's see if we have any questions here. Okay, here. The Jyoti Rupena means impersonal Brahman effulgence. But in this shloka, it is translated as transcendental. How can we understand? Also, in many places in Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada replaced with Bhakti Yoga in the place of Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga. How can we understand these both statements? Right. So, yes, this uh, Jyoti Rupena. Jyoti means the effulgence. And means also revelation. Jyoti Rupena, Srila Jiva Goswami translates here in commentary on Brahma Samhita that uh, revealing, self revealing Jyoti Rupena, self revealing mantra, Jyoti Rupena Manuna, he translates like this self revealing. Or Jyoti Rupena means transcendental. That's how Srila Bhaktisan Saraswati Thakur translates. So the Brahman also means transcendental. Aham Brahmasma means I am a spiritual person. So it's not that these terms are not used like that. They are, they are used like that also. And here we can see that Acharyas all consistently explain that this is self-revealing mantra. So this is how they translate it. I don't know what to say more than that. You know, this is a, a second part of the question is that in many places, Prabhupada replaced Bhakti Yoga in the place of Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga. How can we understand this both statement? Well, we can understand in the sense that Karma Yoga uh, is Yoga. Yoga means that which is linked to Krishna. If you see the purport on the, in the 10th canton, Srila Prabhupada explains, this is 10, uh, nine. Prabhupada explained the definition of Karma Yoga. That when you know the goal is Krishna, but you are attached either to your work or to the result of the work, you are called karma yogi. So ultimately, that if it's actually karma yoga linked to Krishna, if you know that Krishna is bhakti yoga, so so Prabhupada and ultimately karma yoga is meant to lead you to bhakti yoga. So therefore, Prabhupada can say it's a bhakti yoga, but it's maybe you can we may call it. Karma Mishra Bhakti, or we can call it, you know, you are attached a little bit or something, you know. But ultimately, if it's done for Krishna, yoga means you're linked to, you are doing some work for Krishna, then could be called Bhakti Yoga. Prabhupada did in many, many places like that, you are right. Or Jnana Yoga also. Yeah. If one is 
he knows the goal is Krishna, but is attached to the knowledge, to a little bit of this philosophical speculation. He is called Jnana Yogi. That is the definition of Jnana Yoga. But again, yoga means that, that he is actually linked to Krishna. But there is attachment. There is a little bit setback. So he will, by practicing, he will get purified. He will ultimately come to Bhakti Yoga. This we understand from the yoga letters, that the yoga ultimately is meant to lead you to Bhakti. Karma Yoga means when your activity is linked to Krishna, Jnana Yoga when your knowledge is linked to Krishna, Dhyana Yoga when your meditation absorption is linked to Krishna. And Bhakti means all of this. Bhakti means when your activities, your knowledge, your meditation and emotions, dedication, devotion is linked to Krishna. So is included. So in that way, Srila Prabhupada also to emphasize that ultimately goal of all this is Bhakti Yoga. There is only ultimate, ultimate, all these processes are meant to purify us and to take us to Bhakti Yoga. This point also you can see in 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, when there is gradation from opposite side going on. 12.8, 12.9, 12.10, 12.11. You can see Prabhupada, Krishna says, that first you fully absorb with me, with attachment, with bhava, with feelings for me. If you cannot do that, at least practice sadhana bhakti, at least practice your rules regulation. If you cannot do that, at least work for me. If you cannot do that, at least understand properly what is your position. You know? So he gives again gradation. 12 chapters, shloka 8, 9, 10, and 11. You can see a little bit and see the purpose. So ultimately, all these yogas are meant to bhakti yoga. So Prabhupada didn't go into detail, into details discussion, what is Nishkama Karma, what is Sakama Karma, what is it? First of all, there is no Varnashram society. Varnashram completely collapsed. If you speak of Karma Yoga, it means you speak on your duties according to your Varnashram. You know, what are my duties? What is my service to be performed for Krishna? Varnashram is collapsed. So Srila Prabhupada brings the holy name, and explains that you work for Krishna, you understand Krishna, you, you try to understand knowledge about Krishna, which will invoke bhakti, and ultimately you become devotee of Krishna. So yes, he a shortcut he, he given, and ultimately uh, the goal of all this is bhakti yoga. So there is no harm translating like this. The ultimate purpose he knows, he knows what is, what is actually aim, to be devotee of Krishna, to surrender to Krishna. So there is no any contradiction that Prabhupada translates karma yoga or jnana yoga as a bhakti yoga. Fine, there is no contradiction. There is one goal, one process, and there is all ultimately aim. Atav pumbi dvija shrishta varnasham vibhagasya svanushti thasya dharmasya samsidir haritoshanam. Ultimately, karma yoga, all your duties according to varnas and ashramas are meant to please Lord Hari. Nothing else is meant to bring you to bhakti. So this is uh, this is the what, what I understood. Okay, Hare Krishna. Does mantra upasana leads to raganuga? If so, if so, any example from shastras? Yes, mantra upasana means that you you concentrate form on the one particular form of the Lord, or as Prabhupada given, form of Raga, Atma, Raga Atmika Bhakta in Vrindavan. And uh, that leads to spontaneous Swarasiki Upasana. Yes. And what is example in Shastra? Brahma Samhita. The Brahma is example. <laughs> That's example. And you will see this, because we didn't come to those lokas. You will see this, the example. So wait and see. We are coming. We are going to discuss more. If one chants Hare Krishna and doesn't come in disciplic succession, would the mantra have its effect? Since we say that the holy name is all auspicious. Yes. If somebody chants Hare Krishna, but it does not come in Sampradaya, means he did not take initiation from a guru in Guru Parampara, will he, what was the final read? Will he? Will the mantra have its effect? So, I, when I ask senior devotees, what happens if you chant Hare Krishna and uh, you did not take initiation from Guru? Uh, 
if I, uh, then the, the rep, I, what was the reply and advice from the senior devotees is that, that chanting Hare Krishna before initiation will make you purified and understand that I need the Guru, I have to take Diksha mm -hmm. from the Guru. That's the result of Maha Mantra. It will purify and make you understand I need a Guru. So that will be effect. So that, that effect is there. But you see, Shastra Prabhupada quotes, Sampradaya Vihina Mantra Nishvala Mataha. But you cannot expect that you will just go home back to Godhead just like that without surrendering to Guru. Because Krishna's system, Krishna set up the system, Acharya Maam Vijanya, you should worship Acharya. You should go through my devotees. Tadvidi Pranipata and Pariprasina Sevaya. You want to know me, Arjun? You go to Guru. You go to my devotee. But through my devotee, you can come to me. That is Krishna's system. You show Krishna love by loving his devotees. And now if somebody wants a chance, but he did not accept the Guru, uh, Mahamantra will take him uh, further in association of devotees and uh, make him understand that he needs a Guru. So this is, this is proper understanding. Oh, chanting holy name is always auspicious, but if you want the full result to see the Lord, to enter into Lord Krishna's pastime and serve him eternally, then one needs a guru, guru parampara. This is the, this is the very, I mean, this is the necessity, like that. Yes, okay, good. So this, the, these were the questions for tonight. Thank you very much. It's a difficult topic and purpose are difficult. I hope we went uh, slowly and as much as possible. Look, this is above our head, we have to admit. But we are reading Brahma Samhita. Let's try to understand what are the purpose all about and respectfully we can proceed next time to the, to the shloka number four. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Brahma Samhita ki jai, Gaur Premanande. Krishna